Shortly after he moved to Hollywood, Ron joined the Screen Actors Guild. After the war, he was elected president of the Guild, an important step in his life. He began to take notice of what was going on in his own business, the motion picture industry. He'd learned that communist sympathizers had taken over several important organizations in Hollywood after the war, and in 1946 and 47, he'd helped lead the Guild during a bitter jurisdictional strike in which a labor group, the Conference of Studio Unions, tried to take control of the movie industry through intimidation and violence, including threatening to throw acid in Reagan's face because he resisted their efforts. Well, that taught Ron a lot about what was going on in his industry and in the country. Back then, American-made movies occupied 70% of the playing time on the world's movie screens. Joseph Stalin had set out to turn Hollywood into an instrument of Soviet propaganda to advance his effort to create a global communist state. Ron knew from personal experience how communists were willing to use lies, deceit, and violence to advance their cause. He realized America faced no more insidious threat to the democratic freedoms that many Americans had taken for granted than communism. A side effect of the communist attempted infiltration of Hollywood was a backlash against the motion picture industry, which did not have very good public relations. That uh, small clique uh, has been referred to, has been discussed as more or less following the tactics that we uh, associate with the Communist Party. Ronald Reagan began speaking out in defense of his industry. As he gave more and more speeches, he received a telephone call that changed his life and enriched it forever. The movie director, Mervyn Leroy, told him that an actress working on one of his pictures needed Ron's help. The young woman, Nancy Davis, was very upset because the name of another actress, also identified as Nancy Davis, had appeared on the membership rosters of several communist front organizations. Aware of the work Ron had done to clear movie people unfairly accused as communists, Leroy asked Ron if he'd look into it. Ron did a little research and learned that there was more than one Nancy Davis connected with show business. In fact, there were several. It took only a few minutes to establish Mervyn's Nancy Davis was not the one who belonged to several communist front groups. She's a worrier, Leroy said. She's still worried people will think she's a communist. Leroy then suggested that Miss Davis would feel better if Ron would talk to her and suggested Ron invite her out for dinner. Ron agreed to do it, but to be on the safe side when he called her, he told her he had an early call in the morning and that it would have to be an abbreviated evening. Nancy agreed, adding she too had an early call and couldn't stay out late either. Well, they had both lied about the early call, a pretense to protect themselves from what might be a boring or awkward evening. It was anything but that. Ron would later say that if God had ever given him any evidence of a master plan, it was the night he brought Nancy into his life. Ron's life rejuvenated when he met Nancy. He described their marriage from the start as being what adolescents dreamed that a marriage should be. It was rich and full from the beginning, and, he says, has gotten more so with each day. Ron felt that Nancy had moved into his heart and replaced the emptiness he'd been trying to ignore for a long time. There was no time to figure the odds. I had to rely on experience and instinct. Right or wrong, I decided to play it safe for the 85 men in this cell. Tell me, what did your instinct tell you about this? I wanted to be sure this time, so we played it safe. Until I knew that you were Mr. Wright. Then you gave me that line about wartime marriages. I wanted a wife and kids, not a widow and orphans. Sure. And I began to think maybe you were playing the South Sea Circuit. You knew better. How could I know? Did you give me a post-dated check? So I got sore. What really happened is that I got scared, unsure. That's how it still is with me, Case.
Ron and Nancy's marriage produced a stability for him that his first marriage didn't. It also produced a second family. First, there was a daughter, Patty, and then the natural-born son he always wanted. And they named him Ron Jr.,